Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. That's okay. I got it. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. To God be the glory. Amen. got some I got some news for you today uh, I got some good news for you me and my wife are still together yeah. Amen. has already been read, but I just want to reiterate this one verse. It's coming out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 8. Amen. Amen. The grass withers, flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. You can take your seats now. The grass withers, flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, here we are once again behind your sacred desk. I know it's temporary. I own that. I know it's temporary. But Father, I pray today that you move this old body aside one more time. Shut these old clay lips one more time. That you may speak your word to your people. That they may receive it. That they may believe it. And most of all, apply it to our daily lives. Father, we know that there's going to come a day that they're going to roll us down here with the tongue of our mouth glued to the top of our mouth. And we won't be able to say one word. But Father, we're still thankful that your word will stand forever. In your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Last Sunday, we came out of the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 4, where Jesus was being tempted. And he just kept saying, it is written. <laughs> it is written. Mm -hmm. It is written. Amen. It is written. That means to me that all that we need to know, God ensured that it was written down before he left. Amen. All that we need to say or respond to anyone, God has already given us a book yes, sir. to look at, yes. to give a response. All that we need to know to live this life. Yes, God. He didn't summarize the book, but he gave it to us fully in the book. Amen. You're going to walk with me, won't you? Amen. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet this gentleman. Let me say it again. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet this gentleman. Yes, he, he is a Frenchman. He is a philosopher. He is an atheist, if you will. 
walk with me, if you will. And he came to me, and we had a great conversation. It was right here in the house of God when we had that conversation, and he came to me, and he explained to me. He said, John, I want you to understand that I'm making a prediction now that within 100 years from the year of 1776, the Bible will be three things. It will be non-inspiring, non non-existent, and non-relevant to anyone that wants to read it. But the truth is, what you must know about that prediction is, is that Mr. Votar is dead, but the word of God is still standing. Come on and walk with me just a little while. Now you got to understand. Let me explain something to you. Let me give you some facts about the Bible. And the first thing that you should know is we're working from the King James Version. Come on and walk with me now. Because the truth is when it comes to the Bible, what you must understand, it is the first book written. It is the old, oldest book in existence. And it is the only book that can guide you from cradle to grave. Walk with me just for a little while. But let me give you some more facts and then I'm going to get down to the truth of the Bible. The facts about the Bible is and what you must understand Again, we are working with the King James Version. And when you work with the King James Version, you must understand that it has been translated into over 900 different languages. Walk with me just for a little while. It is 66 books compiled as one, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. Oh, if you want to know the chapters, it is 1,189 chapters in that book. But now when you get down to the verses, you got to understand that there are 31,102 verses in that book. But now just go a little farther if you want to know how many words words are in the Bible. It is over 801,000 in the words of the Bible. But that's not the end of it because you must understand within that Bible you got to go deep now. Within that Bible there are 1,813 promises in that Bible. From there you will see that there were over six, there were, there were, were uh, 3,000 to 700,000. Walk with me if you will. There are 3,000 to 7,000 promises in the Bible. There are 1,813 prophecies in the Bible. And last but not least there are 630 13 judgments in the Bible. Oh, but you got to go a little deeper than that. <laughs> That's the reason you got to know the word because the truth is what I want you to understand. Now that you know the facts, the most important thing that you know, know about the Bible is, is that you can count on the Bible if you can count on nothing else. You can stand on the Bible if you don't count on nothing else. Walk with me just for a little while because you must understand every promise be fulfilled. Every, every promise will be fulfilled. Every prophecy will come to pass. And every judgment we will see. I want you to understand that's what the Bible is all about. But I've come to understand, walk with me just for a little while. When it comes to Christianity, there are two things, there are two principles that we are built on. We are built on faith in God. We are built on faith in a man that we have never seen. And we stand on the promises of God. That is the word of God. That is what we believe in. That is what we rely on. That is what we hold on to. Walk with me just for a little while because now you must understand not only does not only does the gangsters have weapons but Christians have weapons also you have to understand we got weapons we got faith we got prayer and we got the word of God if we don't have I want you to understand whatever they come whatever they bring I'm already armored and bared down to the teeth I want you to understand I got the word of God with me now let me explain something to you don't ever come to me I want you to understand this very clearly don't ever come to me and start quoting scripture because I'm going to ask you three things. I'm going to ask you what book it come out of. I'm going to ask you what chapter to go to. And I want you to show me in that verse. Because the greatest fear of mine is to lead someone astray about the word of God. Because the truth is, let me explain something to you. If you leave out one verb, if you leave out one adjective, if you don't pronounce the correct noun, you have twisted God's word. Walk with me if you will. But now I've come to understand something else. It's what you've got to understand is walk with me if you will. We have a responsibility to God's word. We have a responsibility to learn God's word, to believe God's word, and also obey the truth in God's word. That's the truth, the whole truth, and not much the truth. Because you must understand if you understand nothing else. The very reason that we fall into sin, the very reason that we can't resist temptation is because of our well, let me explain something to you. The first thing about it is, is that we are ignorant to the word of God. I want you to understand, we got Bibles laying all around our house. We go to, uh, got them open up to the 23rd Psalm. Some people even got them open up to the one, to Psalm 119. But, it, but you know what you have to do every now and then? You got to dust it off every now and then. You got to read the Word of God. Walk with me. Now that's just ignorance to God, to the Word of God. But then is our habits. Our habits are making us lazy to the Word of God because we really don't want to read the full scripture. We just want to know where we can use it to cut someone like a knife. But if you don't read the whole scripture, I want you to understand 
things, uh, you are convicting them and you are convicting yourself also. Now, 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 now that you know that you're ignorant to the word of God, now that you know that, that you're not living in, and you have habits that's right, not right with God, the other thing that you got to understand is, is sometimes we are selfish with the word of God. We don't even want to be bothered with it. Not on Saturday nights, not on Friday nights, not on Wednesday night, not on Sunday night, not on Tuesday night. We don't even want to be bothered with it. And the last thing you must understand is, it's a lack of commitment to knowing God. Because you can't know God if you don't know his word. Walk with me just for a little while. Because now I understand what Matthew 11 and 12 speaks about when it says, when Jesus said the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and with violence we must take it by force. Every now and then we got to get violent with the word. Because the truth is, if Eve had got violent with the word of God, the shepherd never would have got her. If Adam had got violent with the word of God, he never would have thrown Eve under the bus. You got to get violent with the word of God. Now I know what you're saying. Well, preacher, pastor, that wasn't no Bible back then. Eve didn't have nothing to stand on. That's a, that's a lie and the truth ain't in you. Because I want you to understand some of the word of God. Whatever comes out of his mouth, that's the word of God. That is the Bible right there. We already had the Bible. We just didn't use the Bible. Walk with me just for a little while. Now, now, now what you must understand, the reason is because every day, every day, no matter what you're doing, where you're at or where you're going or who you will, you need to renew your mind daily in the word of God. <laughs> Why? Because the children may explain something to you. Because every day Satan is watching you. Every day Satan is attacking you. Every day Satan is coming after you. Every day Satan is angry with you when you read the word of God. Walk with me if you will. And he has his methods. He has his tactics that he is going to try to take you out. Not take you you out in your life or take you out of the realm of God, take you out of the world of the Christian people, take you from real even people. You got to understand, Satan is coming for you. And if you don't read the God's word, you're going to be led astray. Because if I can't give Satan no more credit than that, he knows the word of God. What you got to understand about Satan is he has methods and he uses these methods in order they are nothing new they are nothing old they are the same methods all the time the first method is to get you to question the word of God walk with me if you will because if he ever gets you to question it, if he ever gets you to doubt it he's got you right where he wants you if he can't get you to question the word of God you got to understand that he's gonna confuse you with the word of God some use a big word like misconstrued down in the country we say he's just twisting he's just lying about the word of God but if he ever gets you to get confused about the word of God he got you where he wants you. The third method that Satan is going to try to use, if he can't get you to doubt the word of God, if he can't confuse you with the word of God, he's going to attack the motive of the scripture. Because if you don't know the purpose of the scripture, if you don't know the meaning of the scripture, if you don't know the context, the culture, and the understanding of the scripture, Satan is going to take you out. So if he don't get you to doubt it, I thank God he won't. If he don't get you confused, I pray he doesn't. If he don't get you wondering about the motive and what the purpose of it is, the last thing that Satan is going to do when it comes to the word of God, he's going to make, they make sure that you feel like when you just read the word of God that it deprives you of your blessing instead of you being blessed by the word of God. Walk with me if you will because the truth is, all I'm trying to tell you is, is that Satan has a plan. It is to disorient you, it is to distort you, it is to discourage you, and most of all, deceive you. Now what you got to understand, now you got to go to another book because I read this and I made, made personal sense to me. Now all you got to do is understand that in John 8, chapter there, John 8, yeah, verses 31 through 32, all you got to understand about that is, it said, if you abide in my word, if you keep my word, if you stay connected to my word, if you live my word, if you apply my word, if you will share my word, if you will do my word, I got you. Because the truth is that if you abide in my word, then you are a disciple of mine and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's the reason a lot of people are still in bondage right now. You don't believe me, you go and ask the Israelites because I'm going to tell you something right now. Walk with me just for a little while. Anybody can bring you out of physical slavery, but it takes the word of God to bring you out of the mental slavery. The Israelites, yeah, they came out of Egypt. They crossed through the Red Sea. But they were still in mental slavery for, for 40 more years. 
He had to clean that up. But I can't leave us out either. Because the truth is, African Americans was enslaved for over 400 years. But I want you to understand something. It took, about, it took what, about 20 more years. Matter of fact, it took another 100 years for to bring us out of middle slavery. Do you understand what I'm saying? We were still, I'm gonna tell you something. Let me, let, let, I know it's not Black History Month, but let me tell you something. Some people didn't want to come out of slavery. Oh, you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Some people were comfortable being a slave. But the truth is, if you are addicted to alcohol, the word can bring you out of it. If you are addicted to drugs, the word can bring you out of it. Anything that you're addicted to, you are a slave to. Anybody want to be set free? Then all you need is the word of God. You, all you need is the word of God. Again, my greatest fear is to lead someone astray about the word of God. That's the reason when people quote stuff to me, where is it at? Old Testament New What book is it in? What culture, what culture was it in? What context was it in? Who was speaking? Who was receiving? I want you to break it down to me. Just don't tell me something that mama told you. Don't tell me something you heard on TV. I want you to give me the word straight from God himself. The reason is, is because truthfully, we are all ministers of God. We are all ministers of God. And if we lead someone astray, oh, help me, Lord. If we lead someone astray, who will they turn to next? People don't want to come to church because we're not living what we're speaking. People don't want to be around Christians because we're not living what we're speaking. Let me explain something to you. And I'm done. You gotta understand something. The word has power. The word has power. You gotta understand God's word has power. Wherever it is spoken, wherever it is written, wherever it is heard, God's word has power. Walk with me just for a little while. God's word is important. Do you know why it's important? Because it rebukes us, it teaches us, it corrects us, and most of all, it equips us. Because someone told me that the acronym was what? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Now, now that you know that God's word is important, you got to understand that God's word is inspiration. Not just inspiration divine inspiration. Yes, man wrote it, but God was the one that breathed the words into them for them to write. Now that you know God's word is important, now that you know that it's inspiration, you must understand that God's word is exclusive and inclusive. What do you mean exclusive? All you got to do is understand that the message, there's a message in there for everyone that's going through. I don't care if you're going through LGBTQ. I don't care if you're going through hell right now. I don't care if you're going through brokenness. I don't care if you're going through brokenhearted. I don't care if you're in discouragement. I don't care if you're down and out. I don't care if you're evil and mean. I don't care if you're good or bad. The word is something in there for the word for you. But now you've got to understand, not only is it an exclusive message, you got to understand it is an inclusive message because it just not contains the black and white. It's for Jew and Gentile. It's for the rich and the poor. It's for the uneducated and the educated. It's for the foolish and the righteous. It's for everybody that can read the word of God. It is in there. Now, now, now that you know that God's word is important. Now that you know that God's word is inspiring. Now that you know that God's word is exclusive and inclusive. Now you got to know that God's word is in error. There is not a mistake in it. You know why? Because my God cannot lie. Maybe your God can, but my God can't lie. And he's already told me that his word will never come back to me void. Now that you know that his word is important, now that you know that his word is inspiration, now that you know that it's exclusive and inclusive, now that you know that it's inerrant, you got to understand that God's word is infallible. What does that mean? It means walk with me, if you will, is that it's perfect, it's reliable, it's dependable. I can stand on it, I can set my clock to it, I can believe if I don't believe nothing else. Now that you know that God's word is important, now that you know that God's word is inspiring, now that you know that it's exclusive and inclusive, now that you know that it's inerrant, now that you know that it's infallible, you got to understand that God's word is influential. It will change you. Walk with me, if you will. It will change your mind, it will charge your heart, it will change your behavior, it will change your attitude, it will change change you if you let it. Walk with me if you will. Now that you know that God's word is important. Now that you know that God's word is inspiring. Now that you know that it's exclusive and inclusive. Now that you know that it's inerrant. 
now that you know that it's infallible, now that you know that it's influential, you got to understand that it is incorruptible. Sin don't want to be around it. Sin can't stand it and sin will run from it. Because whenever you start speaking about the word of God, you'll know who believes it and who don't. Because they will take off and run from it, baby. Now, now, now that you know that it's important, now that you know that it's inspiring, now that you know that it's exclusive and inclusive, now that you know that it's inerrant, now that you know that it's infallible, now that you know that it's influential, now that you know that it's incorruptible, it is indestructible also. Because right there in Isaiah 54 and 17, it said no word, no weapon will prosper that comes against the word of God. I'm bared to the teeth. I'm ready for it. You can't take me out. I'm going to take you out. Walk with me if you will. Now that you know that it's important, now that you know that it's inspiring, now that you know that it's exclusive and inclusive, now that you know, walk with me if you will, it is in error. Now that you know that it's infallible, now that you know that it's incorrupt. Now that you know that it's influential, now that you know that it's indestructible, it is illuminating also. Do you know how I know that it's illuminating? Because what you must understand is every day is new mercies in that Bible. Every day is new mercies for you. You have to understand that every day when you read God's word, he will share the challenges of today with you and the needs of tomorrow for you. Walk with me if you will. Now what you must understand, because we get it confused, is that everybody running around talking about God gave us some revelation. You must understand the difference between revelation and illumination. Revelation is what God just gave you. It's brand new. You ain't never seen it before. You ain't never experienced it before. You ain't never heard it before. But when it comes to illumination, some God gave you five days ago, five weeks ago, five months ago, five years ago. Then, then the light comes on. In that situation when you needed it the most, it came back to you. That's what it is. The Bible is essential equipment for every Christian, every believer, every follower of God. I'm going to tell you something. You, you might vote me out, but I'm going to tell you. I started. The devil almost got me. He said, send the media ministry home. Don't show it on the screen. See how many people got their weapons with them today. I'm going to tell you something. If we're in here and there's a storm going on and the power will go out, I'm going on with the word. You know why? Because I got my weapon. I got my weapon. I'm not relying on some screen to tell me what it is. I'm not relying on a phone to bring it up for me. I got my weapon. You can. You gotta understand something. Nobody's expecting you to memorize all sixty-six books. Nobody. There are two walking men that have been labeled as men of the Bible that know the Bible in and out. One is God, and there's another one in Memphis, Tennessee, and he is known as the walking Bible. That's good for him, but for me, I got my faith in the hard word right here. That's what I'm relying on right here. Don't come, don't take no nouns out. Don't replace it with no adverbs. And all. I got my word right here. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God will stand forever. I got my word. It's raggedy, it's old, it's all marked up. And the good thing about this weapon is, it's just like a gun. Let me explain to you why. Because if you ever watch police shows, when a bullet goes through it, it leaves a certain footprint. 
Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I can't imitate Sister Robinson because Sister Robinson got her own DNA. No matter what crime I commit and want to blame it on Sister Robinson, if I left my DNA there, I'm in trouble. This is my DNA. This is my DNA. This is my DNA. Is my DNA. I, was, I was talking to a good friend Thursday night. And, 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 and he said something, I don't even think he realized it. Mr. Buddy said, when you got the right tools, you can get work done better. When, let me say it again. When you got the right tool, you can get work done better, faster, more efficient. You need the right tools. Because the truth is, sometimes in some situations, our faith won't show up. Sometimes in certain situations, we don't even know what to pray. But if I got my word, if I got my word, I know I'm going to be all right. I need you to get to a Bible. I need you to get to a Bible. Live by it. Apply it. Don't beat nobody over the head with it. Because the truth is, you're going to knock somebody over the head and knock your own self over the head with it. You got to know the word. And I know what somebody's going to say, well, church should have a Bible on every pew. Come on. It's just some things that you got to want to know. It's just something that you want to take ownership of. You should have your word. Not just when you come into the house of God, but you need this word more often. When you're outside of the house of God. Because that's what old Satan is going to come at Mr. Slewfoot and old Switch and Sally is going to come and check you out. They're going to come for you. But I guarantee you, when they see that you got your word on your hip, they'll run for cover. They'll run for cover. Most of the time, and I'm done, people that want to give you a piece of their mind will check first to see whether you even know the word. If you don't know the word, well, let me tell you, you got to have your word. Because the truth is, all the verses that I just gave you, they might not be in here. How about that? How about that? You got to know the word. You got to stand on it. You got to believe in it. Because the truth is, it's the best book written. Standing on your feet. I ain't going no farther than that. It's the best book written. The doors of the church are open now. They've been open over 2,500 years, and I pray they never close. Invitations have already been set out. They are just straight for you. From the very day that God, God created you, that he brought you into this world, your invitation was already before you. It is seven of them if you want me to go through all of them. But the truth is, the, the primary invitation, the most important invitation that I pray that you ever see is to become a child of God. Is to become a child of God. Don't worry about what house you're going to join. God will show that to you. But you want to be in the kingdom. You want to be in the kingdom. Why do you want to be in the kingdom? Well, one reason you want to be in the kingdom is because you don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. You don't know whether God going to call you home or Satan going to take you out. But he still got to get permission from God. Isn't that good? To know that somebody is watching over you already. They can't touch you. You don't believe me? Call up Job. They can't touch you unless God say so. Oh, isn't that good? Now, if you're not in the kingdom, they can come get you whenever they want you. But they can't touch you until God say so. Mm. That's a sermon right there. Somebody should be preaching that. Preacher, somebody, somebody should grab that right there. You can't touch me. 
until God say so. Again, the invitation is to come and be a part of God's kingdom. And the other invitations will follow. You just answer them one by one. And the thing about it is, they keep getting better and better. Amen? Yeah. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest room about in our lives this day and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 Yes, Lord. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the peace.